Hey guys, you are here from the Kansas City Malls, our final day. I'll let you guys know a little bit of hints. You guys come back at the 4.30.
of our performance instruments, we've been supported by a taiko company in Japan, and that taiko company is called Asano Taiko. They have a, a satellite company that has just been started in Los Angeles, where it is called the Los Angeles Taiko Institute. And there in Los Angeles, they offer classes from very world-class teachers, in addition to housing um, a studio in which taiko players could actually go and practice. Um, which we're quite jealous of, in addition to being a place in which you can purchase these drums. We are really fortunate in the fact that we haven't um, had to purchase our drums, but have been supported by Asano Taiko. Um, in addition, with that comes our big drum back there, and the piece that we use to feature that particular piece is called Zero. And that was actually inspired post 311. Um, if you remember March of 2011, a tsunami struck the northern part of Japan, and that was quite devastating for the country. Toru uh, Watanabe, the other co-director um, of Unit Sozo and myself, um, actually met while I was studying in Japan uh, from a company called Watabiza. Watabiza is located in Akita Prefecture, which is in the northern Japan, and although that particular prefecture in northern Japan was not hit because it was on the other side of the ocean, or excuse me, the other side of the country, so it wasn't hit by um, the ocean side, um, but the, all of northern Japan was greatly impacted. And with that, we wanted to pay homage to the many friends and their families in which uh, this devastation did affect. That is what Zero is in honor of. The second piece, we wanted to bring that spirit and uplift it with a piece that was called Stepping Stones. Stepping Stones is actually a piece uh, made by a composer from the UK Taiko, or UK Taiko community. And one of the things that we also learned a couple of years ago is that Taiko has been spreading not only here in the United States, but worldwide. And at the World Taiko Gathering two years ago, we started to meet Taiko players from England, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, South America, all to gather and convene and start talking, of, and of course, Japan, um, about our passion of the drum and why we play. That's where one of the inspirations for bringing in an international voice into our repertoire came from, is the fact that Taiko is existing in so many places, and it is really wonderful. The next piece that we are going to be playing for you is another duet piece, and it's um, written with the idea of really contemporizing the Taiko art form and our voice. Told and myself study dance, and so we're really interested in the form of Taiko. And so this next piece, Zuto Taride, which means together forever, really encapsulates the story of us being not only co-directors together, but also partners in life. 
Um, but another part of the story is this, as we've been married for 13 years, is that our story weaves together the idea of being together forever, but also stuck together as well. So, we hope that you will see both sides as we tell our story through the drum. This next piece is called Zutto Tarire.
again. Um, we are Unit Solzel, and we do hope that as we close our program for today, that you may be inspired to stay in touch with us, stay connected. Um, you can find out most information from our website, Unit Solzel. Um, unit spelled U-N-I-T, Souls was spelled S-O-U-Z-O-U dot com. You can also find us on Facebook as well where we uh, talk a lot about uh, what we're up to, what we're going to be up to. So we hope to either see you on Facebook or our website sometime soon. With that, I know Abby spoke of her personal experience. It is a very empowering moment to be able to do your own drum roll. It's really empowering as well to learn your first taiko song. And I know there is taiko that exists in this community. So if you live nearby, please find out more about the art form. In addition, if you're in the Portland area and you drove down here, um, we would love to see you. So we have our Taiko classes, Mondays and Wednesday nights. Please look at our website for more information because we have a workshop um, coming up in April and that's a wonderful, wonderful entry point to give it a try. So with that, I am going to implore and also employ actually all of you to get into the Taiko spirit. So when we play Taiko, we use our voice in many ways. One of the ways we use our voice is to learn our taiko songs, so we syllabalize our uh, taiko music. But another way in which we use our voice is to show our spirit. And there's something in taiko that we call ki-ai. So I'll teach you some taiko right now. Everyone say ki-ai. Ki means energy and I means gathering. And so it's a beautiful way to really describe how we gather energy through our voices in order to show our spirit. And lots of times it's to encourage and to support each other. So we'll be ki i -ing for each other. Oftentimes in songs, um, you might hear us shout things out. Most of those nonsensical, but just really to try to give our spirit to another player or to bring it out to the audience. So this next piece is inspired by a ki And so we are going to ask all of you to be a part of this song. So the ki or the word that we'd like you to learn is this. Everyone say, oi sa. Oi sa. Oi sa. Nice. Now, one thing about ki it's about your spirit, but it's also about volume. The way that you add your volume is that you make sure that your taiko ki is not just a scream from your throat, but it is something that comes from the center of your body, what we call hara. We say hara. Center of your body. And um, it's also the power to play taiko as well. So we don't say it all comes from our arms. It actually comes from the center of our body. So when you say the word oisa next, I'd love for it to come from the center of your body. So it should have more richness and volume. So after me again, I'm going to say oisa. 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 Nice. Okay. This song is going to ask you to oisa. You can oisa anytime you'd like to. But uh, when we uh, say the word oisa, say it right back at us. Um, one of the things about oisa is that this is a kiai that you might hear here in a certain matsuri in northern Japan. Where Toru and I met at Wadabiza, there is a festival every year in September called Kakuno Date Matsuri. And with them, when they, they have these huge carts, and when they're pushing these huge carts, they're often saying, oisa, oisa, oisa. For three days, when you go around town, you hear this ki and so it just lingers inside of your mind and body. So with that, please, let's celebrate community, and we are going to oisa. Everyone, oisa. 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 We are Unit Sozo. Please stay in touch.
And welcome to out on a uh, welcome to the Pacific Rim Art Guild. Thanks so much for being here this evening. My name is Claire Fian, and I am here as a guide this evening, along with my um, co-chair of the Oregon Country Fair Bill Wooten Endowment Committee. The Oregon Country Fair is sponsoring tonight's First Friday Art Walk. So we give special thanks to the fair for sponsoring this art walk. The Oregon Country Fair is now in its 44th year. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization that continues to support arts and education in the Lane County region through its multifaceted philanthropy program. We hope that you'll all come experience our primary Many of you event. may be unfamiliar that the Oregon Country Fair does a fair amount of philanthropy, but Linda and I have the pleasure of being able to review grants and with other committee members offer funding that supports arts programs in the Fern Ridge School District, mainly in the schools and in some other art programs there. So now I would like to introduce you to Sandy Grubbs, who's part of the Guild here. you're here and enjoy our new location we've been of course involved in art for about two years now but in this location only three months so this is our first uh, stop on the art walk and we're so excited for all of you to be here uh, this is a group of artists that came together and we just want to show what we can do and Dan Chen is one of our artists and we're so happy to feature him this month because it's his 50th birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. Thank you. So speaking of the birthday man, this is, uh, we are gonna take, this is a look of Dan's work over many, many years. And I hope that you have had the privilege to see his work over the years. And we would love you to talk to us. So it's a privilege to be you know, I'm honored to have the place that uh, to show off my work for the last, what, I guess it's 35 years or so. So I started way back on that and uh, through the wall in the back. So that's kind of, uh, you know, chronological. When I was about probably about 18 or 19, that peacock, watercolor on silk, and through the years I come to the United States, and doing the drawings and airbrush and drawings and drawings and pastels and go back about 20 years afterwards I do another watercolor on silk which is, was a challenge for me because when I started way back when that's all I know and uh, after I came to the state and I learned all about values and all that kind of stuff and I tried to bring that together, so it was a struggle, but uh, you know, that's part of artist's life, I guess. So we call it, this is the path, and I've been going all different places, and through all the uh, um, China paint over glaze, that was part of my training way back when, and I guess the interesting about that is, uh, we were playing badminton two hours in each morning, and when your hand is shaking, but you can see the training come out of that is you have to draw those little lines. They're not stamped or anything, it's all hand painted. So when you come back after two hours, you still have to be really steady kind of uh, hand for the brushes. So as you can see, that's my foundation to come all the way here and study Western arts and fascinating with airbrush and uh, printmaking and sculpture and pastels and raccoons and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a really uh, blessed uh, life as an artist and we really are really thankful that you know have supported like this community. Truly I've been here over 21 years and many of you have supported me 
and watch my journey through. So, you know, hopefully that will give you a thanks and uh, to give back to you yeah, the pleasure that you guys have given me. Thank you. Questions for Dan that you'd like to ask in the large crowd. Your other option, of course, is to ask Dan individually. But does anyone have a question? What's your birthday wish? Continue to do art. <laughs> we hope so too. We wish that for your birthday as well. Anyone else? Yes. Do you have your own bronze foundry in your studio? No. I use uh, Ryman's bronze, which is in town. It's a local artist as well, so he's doing great work. Other questions? Well, thank you so much for being here. We will be here another approximately 15 minutes, and then we will move on to Out on a Limb Gallery at 191 East Broadway. So you can join us there if you like. Thank you so much.
Maybe I'm too tall. Right now I'm going to introduce Dick Easley, who will talk a little bit more about this sh show. Dick? Thank you very much, uh, Michelle, Andrew, and uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, we're very proud to have the, uh, have the Prince of Junichiro Sakino uh, up for your, uh, for your viewing uh, for the next couple of weeks. One of the things that inspired me to, uh, to put this show up at this time uh, was that the, uh, that the University of Oregon beat me to the, to the punch a little bit and they put up uh, Sakino work. So, uh, so you'll be able to see many of the same prints that, uh, that we're showing here. Uh, at the university, for instance, this one that's uh, right over my head, uh, which incidentally is is not uh, ice cream spill there. That uh, that is uh, Mount Fuji inverted in reflection on the tile roof. Uh, one of the one of the more famous prints of Junichiro Sakino's 53 stations in the Takedo. More about that later. Uh, a little bit about Junichiro Sakino. Uh, born in, in uh, 1914 in Amori, he rose to, uh, to the pinnacle of, uh, of prominence as, as a Japanese printmaker in the period immediately following the Second World War. He had, uh, had uh, worked with uh, the, the, the famous uh, Munakata, Mikawa Sampan, and, uh, and uh, Onji, who are uh, Giants in the also giants in the in the world of, of Japanese woodblock prints of uh, 20th century. Uh, Sakino, as Michelle mentioned, is is collected by every museum throughout the world that has anything to do with Asian art. I, I say that there are no exceptions. Uh, uh, Sakino is a giant in his field, and the the series that we have featured here tonight uh, is is one of his major efforts. The 53 stations, the Takedo. The Takedo is the road that runs from Tokyo to Kyoto. And it uh, it is about 300 miles long and it has been in existence for uh, probably about seven centuries. It uh, <clears throat> it probably is, is the most uh, uh, artistically appreciated stretch of road, uh, modern or ancient, in the world. Uh, more art has been created in, uh, along the Takedo than, than any place else. And I think that, uh, that we might look to uh, Ando Hiroshige in the mid-19th century as the one who made uh, the 53 stations of the Takedo uh, world famous. Uh, stations refer to, uh, to way stations. Uh, along the road, uh, there were there were few bridges, and uh, and so in order to get from one place to another, you essentially walked. It took about ten days, and so <clears throat> these stations that uh, that were along the road were were guest houses, uh, places where you traded horses or uh, ate, uh, camped out, whatever, as as you made this trek from uh, from Kyoto to Edo and back. Uh, you may have heard of, uh, of, a, of a rather famous and comical Japanese novel of the 18th century uh, called Shanks Mare. Uh, Shanks Mare, of course, being uh, one's legs. Uh, and uh, there are two kind of comical characters who, uh, who made the trip uh, along the Takedo, and that uh, was a very famous novel uh, in the 19th and early 20th century. Junichiro Sakino set out in uh, 1960 to retrace the steps of Hiroshige and create a modern Takedo series. He worked on, on, this, uh, on this series of 55 prints uh, because there's a beginning and ending station uh, in the 53 stations of the Takedo uh, for a period of about 14 years, completing his work in 1974. <coughs> In 1975, he brought the series to uh, Eugene, Oregon, where it was shown for the first time in the United States, along with Hiroshige's 53 stations in the Takedo, which was part of the, uh, of the University of Oregon collection, uh, uh, the Murray Warner collection. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the prints then uh, uh, were, were in the possession of uh, Professor Yoko McLean, who recently donated all 55 prints uh, to the university, along with uh, a number of other Sakino prints. So uh, here in Eugene, we, we have a repository of, of a pretty significant collection of Junichiro Sakino. Uh, I have, I think, uh, probably about, about 15 of them up at, at this point. The university uh, has, I think, uh, four or five of the, of the Takedo prints up along with other uh, prints of, of Sakino, including uh, that winter stove print uh, over on the back wall. Well, <clears throat> uh, in the, the immediate post-war period, there was, a, there was a, a, a movement of Japanese print artists called the Sosaku Hunga movement, which is, translates to creative prints. Uh, Japanese prints uh, uh, through the, the, seven, uh, the 18th and 19th century had, had gained uh, worldwide uh, reputation, and, and you might know those by the word ukeoe. Uh, uh, and that was the, uh, the, the, the term used to describe Japanese prints. The Sosaku Hunga artists uh, borrowed their tradition from, from European printmakers and, uh, and they carved the blocks, did their own printing, and, uh, and uh, usually numbered and, and limited the edition of the print. The reason Sakino is, uh, is such a giant is that there are uh, international print shows and, and uh, and contests throughout uh, Asia, Europe, and the United States, and he was winning. So his, his, uh, he was, uh, he is uh, a, a leading artist, and it was determined by, uh, by competition and by curators' choices. Uh, he, uh, he was very highly regarded. I, and I think I mentioned he died in 1988. So he was popular during his life. During his lifetime, he was popular even in the pre-war. Uh, period. Uh, in the immediate post-war period, uh, the, the Sosaka Hunga movement got a big shot in the arm by the occupation forces. Uh, you, you may know that uh, Oliver Statler uh, uh, <coughs> championed uh, the Sosaka Hunga artist as well as James Michener who wrote uh, four books on, uh, on Japanese prints, two of them on modern Japanese prints. And, uh, uh, and Sakino, of course, is part of all that. 